Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to the Tommy Cornell Challenge. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is this series? Well, this is going to be a brief intro for every episode, and basically, we're going to be running with an 18-year-old Tommy Cornell, as you can see there on the thumbnail. It does say that Tommy Cornell has signed with Hollyweird Grappling Company. So we're playing the 97 Cornell verse with a nice young Tommy Cornell, and uh, he has taken over as the new head booker of HGC, replacing Sam Strong. Now, Sam Strong will still be in the company, but obviously Tommy Cornell will be our head booker, and uh, he's obviously going to be our playable character as well. So he's jump ship from SWF, and these two are now going to have, these two companies are now going to have the biggest rivalry they can have possi you know, possibly. And yeah, I'm going to try and manage the, the personalities of Sam Strong, Ripcord, and hopefully one day Tommy will be versing both those guys for the world championship. And uh, it's going to be a pretty, going to be a tough challenge because usually I start as the owner of a series. And obviously this time we will be going as the head booker. So that'll limit our spending. It'll limit, you know, our goals. It'll limit signings potentially as well with older guys maybe re-signing because the HGC roster is very old. All these different things. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. Please make sure you smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already, and turn on the notification bell. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. Welcome to episode one of the Tommy Cornell Challenge. Now, we're, we're getting straight into things here. I know it's episode one, uh, but I did kind of talk about the, the actual challenge itself. Just to reiterate, we are playing as Tommy Cornell. I'll show you his profile really quickly here. He is only 18 years old, right? He's been signed directly from SWF and he's been brought in by our young owner, JK Stallings, to be the head booker of the company. Now, first things first, obviously we, uh, we have a TV show in one day's time, so we're going to need to go through storylines and all that type of stuff. But I just want to give you a brief little rundown of exactly what sort of happened in in the last month. So the, the company was created, HGC, Hollywood Grappling Company. And basically from there, this 16-year-old uh, billionaire has uh, essentially signed a pretty, I would say a pretty decent roster, um, a very aging roster though, a very old roster. Um, hence, Tommy Cornell, 18 years old, hopefully coming in and eventually gonna start to, to revamp the place. And if you, if you follow the C-verse law, Tommy Cornell, uh, I think, eventually becomes the owner of HGC and, of course, rebrands it as Total Championship Wrestling. We're not exactly looking to do that. It's not part of the challenge, but maybe that'll be the ending of this series, perhaps. Anyway, size. We are small size. HGC starts as small. Only got 55 popularity uh, across all the main regions in the U.S., and then again, we've only got 45 in both Puerto Rico and Hawaii. Uh, Canada's looking pretty good as well. We've got 45 across the board there. Um, in regards to our broadcasting, this is what it currently looks like. We've got Canada One Choice with small coverage for Canada. Uh, pretty, it's an okay deal. It's only 10% of revenue, so it's actually pretty bad. You would hope to get about 25%. So 10% is not great. Uh, and then we've got USA Free Choice, which is big coverage. Uh, all the way across the whole US. Um, as you can see, again, it's only 10% of revenue from the deal actually coming to HGC. And we also have to pay them 25K per uh, per pay-per-view. Now for TV shows, they're for our pay-per-views, obviously. TV shows, a little bit different. We've got a free-to-air broadcaster with medium coverage across the US. Uh, we get 15% of the revenue, but I think due to it being a free-to-air, you don't actually gain anything, I don't think. Um, it's much more focused on viewership rather than generating any income. Uh, we also have to pay them 25K per episode. Uh, and then finally, we have Maple Leaf Sports, which is a commercial channel with medium coverage across Canada. And with this one, we also get 15% of revenue. Uh, but for this one, we have to pay 75K uh, per TV show. Uh, but this one will actually generate revenue as it is commercial. It's also pro... Uh, pro wrestling, so it's very, um, I guess, catered towards 
wrestling companies and stuff like that. So it's good. One thing to also mention is uh, every single one of these deals, uh, basically we shouldn't have because we either don't have enough popularity um, or we are not the correct size. Or I guess in some cases uh, we don't have enough broadcasting, um, sorry, production values behind our broadcasting. Anyway, we move on from there. We're going to go into titles here real quick. Now, all the titles are currently vacant. So they've essentially only just been created. And we have the Cruiserweight title here, which as you can see, uh, it's going to have influences from the, the SoCal scene. Obviously the local sort of California state. They've got Lucha Libre influences. And of course, a Japanese junior style of wrestling. I've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good storyline to, to, to book us into the first month here uh, with a nice fatal four-way for this vacated title. Uh, we then got the hardcore title. Um, comes from the East Coast Wars, sort of the Japanese deathmatch scene as well. Obviously, it's the more violent style of wrestling. Essentially going to be, you know, your typical hardcore, no DQ, false count anywhere, ladder, tables, whatever, whatever you want to call them, type matches. Um, we're probably, I feel like running... Instead of running actual hardcore matches, I want to run balls count anywhere type style matches where these guys can can literally go all throughout the arena, the backstage area, wherever. And obviously that'll kind of be the, the premise behind this title. Sort of like the, the old sort of hardcore title for WWF. Uh, but, you know, the way it's going to have to be booked is more or less in regular style matches and I'll, we'll make them falls count anywhere matches but that's the the premise behind that now the international title is as you can see the the secondary level championship so therefore it's kind of the the mid card title it's got 40 prestige i i do rate it pretty highly as you can see it uh apparently is meant to be a diverse mix of styles from people all around the world I don't know if that's exactly going to be true, but we'll we'll try and implement some sort of, I guess, worldly vestige onto the belt. And well, I, the, the, I've already got the first champion here next to me. My little uh, little little note or little piece of paper here that I write my uh, my booking stuff on it. And um, yeah, the first champion is likely going to be an American. So there we go. But uh, apart from that. Should be a pretty good mid-card title, and we're going to really try and use this with some important storylines to try and get most of our guys booked and on their way towards the main event scene. Now, the next title we'll go over is obviously the, the tag team titles, the world tag team titles, if you will. We have a lot of tag teams in Hollywood Grappling Company. However, most of them are heels. We have some good tag teams, very good, but I think we have... Three face tag teams and about six or seven heel tag teams. So it's likely that we're going to have to run with a, a heel tag team to uh, to start us off. But like I said, we, we've got some, some decent stocks to pick from. I'll show you the teams here in a second uh, before we do a quick little roster overview. And then we're going to get into booking the first two TV shows in this episode. And then finally, what can we say? We've got the world heavyweight title, the, the, big, the big belt. The big gold belt, the primary title, and obviously, well, apparently Cynics believed, shall we say, I guess past tense now, that the first champion would be Sam Strong, who was the head booker. They believed he would be the first ever champion. However, he's not, no longer the head booker. That is Tommy Cornell, and I think I have a bit of a different bit of a different idea up my sleeve it could also be a ruined idea because both ripcord and sam strong both have creative control in their contracts could throw a big spanner in the works um but yeah sam strong not actually even going to be involved in the first ever title match so there we go kind of a, a big screw you to sam strong who is the most over in the company by the way and i'll show you him in a second uh, but they're the titles, all of them vacant. And uh, I think I'm going to try, I would like to try and essentially leave most of them vacant. I think the hardcore title, we will essentially book straight away. 
um, from this first show. And no, actually, no, we'll go the international. The international title first. Uh, actually, maybe the hardcore as well. So maybe international hardcore. Um, we might wait till next episode and then do the tag team titles. But I think I definitely want... Excuse me. I definitely want both the World Heavyweight and the Cruiserweight to be defended from vacancy to a new champion at the pay-per-view. So that's the, the game plan behind those. Anyway, I'll show you the tag teams now. We've got Black Serpent Cult, obviously a heel team. Um, they're both very old, 51 for Cobra, and then we got 51 for Viper as well. Uh, but being heels, they are both very popular. And I say very popular because we don't have a lot of popularity in the company. We've got two huge, huge stars, Ripcord, Sam Strong. Uh, we then have, I guess, a third star. I wouldn't call him a big star, but Dusty Streets is kind of that star there. And he's at about, I think, 65-ish. We'll check it in a second, but I think he's at about 65. So these guys are actually pretty over when it comes to our roster. Now... I would say a good half of our roster, maybe even two thirds, are probably going to be in time decline in this first year. So that's something we really have to worry about. Um, but these guys, they're going to be very useful. Let's just say that. Anyway, next we have uh, Mucha Lucha, of course, Electrico. And that was a firework. And then we got uh, Mr. Lucha there as well. As you can see, Mr. Lucha, pretty, uh, pretty famous. And, uh, of course, the uh, there's been several iterations in current times as well. Um, but he's going to be involved. Actually, I think both of them are going to be involved in that Fatal 4-Way for the Cruiserweight title. Uh, we've got Savage Fury up next. Java, Tribal Warrior. Again, they're both heels. So we move on. They're a good team, but they'll they'll likely be, uh, be up-and-comers. We've got Spirit Warriors up next. I think both Japanese. Yeah, we got 41-year-old Golden Fox and the 31-year-old Freelancer in Dark Eagle. Um, I think Dark Eagle will be involved in the Cruiserweight storyline, and I think maybe an outside chance for Golden Fox to be potentially used in the international title, just because he is, you know, Japanese, adding a little bit of international flair to, uh, to those types of matches. He's probably not going to be involved in the actual storyline, uh, but he might play a part maybe in a in a number one contenders match, perhaps. Anyway, up next, we've got the Blazing Flames, one of our only base teams, along with Mucha Lucha. We have one more. Uh, but again, they're both really old, 44 there, but in a similar vein to the, uh, the Black Serpent cult. And then we have his older brother, Teddy, there, who's 48 and a little bit more over. Uh, but they're good. They'll they'll do a decent job. We'll probably have them feud with Black Serpent Cult uh, next month to, uh, to sort of see who will become the uh, the new number one contenders. Uh, up next, we've got the Demons of Rage. Uh, they're both really good. Not exactly very over, but they're both very good. There's, again, they're getting up towards that age. But I think right now, we'll sort of be able to get the best out of them for at least another two or three years which will be pretty decent for us to, to at least try and build the uh, the tag team division around them and and some others, and some others. Uh, we've got the Nation of Filth here, Stink and Grunt. Again, more heels. Uh, but these guys, I think... I think we're going we're gonna to steer clear with them of the tag division for now, and I think they can be pretty well utilized as our build-up guys for the hardcore title. Because they, they both have pretty decent hardcore skills, as you can see. So, we might use them. Obviously, it doesn't really matter if they have hard ha ha have hardcore skill. Because we're going to be doing, doing those Falls Count Anywhere matches. So therefore, they're not actually going to take the, uh, the hardcore skill into actual account. Anyway, up next, we've got the Tag Team Specialist, Joel Bryant, Robert Oxford. Of course, if you watch my Local to Global series... Robert Oxford is one of our best road agents, so you actually got him wrestling here, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, more heels. Uh, we've got the Untouchables. Uh, Joel Bryant, Robert Oxford, and this guy, Paul Steadyfast. They're all in a stable together. 
called the Untouchables. Uh, poor Steady Fast. Really young. Really bad. So, yeah. He's also a heal, which um, I'd prefer him to be a face, because then we could maybe use him as a, a bit of a jobber. But apparently he's better as a heal. So there we go. And then finally, we've got the big boys. We've got the Vessi brothers. I'm a big fan of both these guys. And uh, we're sort of getting them at, like, peak, peak age as well. So we've got Larry there. Sorry, Brian there. Larry here. Larry's obviously the much older brother. Uh, but he's a little bit more over as well, which is pretty... Going to be pretty useful. So there we go. Okay. Well, with that said, they're all our tag teams. The stables. Uh, we've got the all-star team, which is... Bessie Brothers, Richie Pangrazio Jr., and then Coach Dick Pangrazio, which I, I believe is Richie's father, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure. Let me read this real quick. Yeah, it's his father. So they're father and son. And uh, yeah, he runs the uh, the all-star team. I guess he should essentially be the leader, really, if you think about it. Uh, but, it, yeah, it really doesn't matter too much. All right, so the roster. We'll do this. We'll try and do this real quick. Uh, but we're going to go by perception. So we've got major stars. We, uh, we do have a few of them. We've got Dick Pangrazio, obviously a manager. Apparently can be a, a color commentator as well. Uh, we'll have to check those in a second. But here are the big three. So we've got Dusty Streets who has 68 popularity in the Southwest. I, yeah, we're in the Southwest. We then have Ripcord, obviously one of the best wrestlers, I would say, in the world, especially at this time. Um, extremely good on the microphone as well, so great, you know, entertainment stats there. 100 basics, 100 psychology, really good technical, really good brawling. 47 years old, though. That's the problem. Also on 400k per month, like I said, creative control in there as well. Also getting a bonus of 30% per event. Yeah, and he's also got 93 popularity, so that's great. Obviously, kind of make would make sense to make him our champion. However, you got a guy like this, you got Sam Strong, 100 popularity across a few regions in America, Southwest, 100. He's essentially the uh, the Hulk Hogan, if you will, of this uh, of this database. And uh, as such, he's not the best in the ring. He's pretty good. Don't get me wrong. 86 psychology, 88 basics. Uh, good enough brawling. Uh, but where he stands out is the, the star quality, the charisma, the entertainment stats overall are just absolutely incredible. You look at his attributes, he's got, you know, highly morale, um, highly moral, sorry. Loves the business. That doesn't work for me, brother. Which is obviously a, a famous, you know, Hulk Hogan line. It's who you know, which is obviously, again, sort of focused to maybe bringing in people that he's not supposed to bring in just because he knows them. Um, obviously, no stunts, 100% babyface, amazing babyface, and he's a marketing dream. So with that said, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he is already our figurehead. Yes. So as you can see, Sam Strong is the current figurehead in the figurehead for 28 days. Obviously, not further, uh, not fully established, and further analysis will be available to us. So we'll see that later on. Uh, but as you can see, he's one hundred percent the uh, the obvious choice there. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll run with him as that uh, as that figurehead, um, and he'll probably become the champion at some stage. But I'm just I'm just not looking to make him the champion pretty much straight away, if that makes sense. All right, so I think that's pretty much everything we need to go over. Uh, one thing I do want to do is rapidly start our merchandise. This is a, a very helpful tip for you guys. No matter the size of company, I suggest you rapidly upgrade merchandise as fast as possible. You can generate so much income. Even if you're a, a local to global, you know, you're an insignificant size company, upgrade your merchandise. 100%. Best thing you can do. Anyway. Quickly check the backstage. We've got a lot of negative influence in the company, which is not great. However, we, we find ourselves with an 84 backstage rating. So at the moment, that's pretty good. 
The only downside is we do have Sam Strong and Dusty Streets who don't like each other. So, bit of a problem there because they'll, uh, you know, at some stage they'll be facing each other. So I think starting off, we need to, to really work on the meddling between those two and just hope and pray that that goes away fairly soon. Anyway, without, you know, any further ado, let's, uh, let's get into the the first TV show here and um, I'll we'll fix up the storylines and I'll sort of discuss the storylines as well as we go into them. We've also been assigned new goals. Now that is something new that we've never really delved into in regards to uh, being the head booker of a company. So let's have a look at those. I need to find out where they are on the thing because I've never even had to look at them before. Uh, where are we? Uh, there we go. All right. So when the time expires, HGC must not have fallen below number two in the company rankings. And that's of critical importance. Uh, we can't hire any wrestler who is classed as having a powerhouse style. That's an interesting one. Very strange. Uh, we also can't hire any wrestler who is classed as having a striker style either. Don't really know why those are his goals, but there they are. Um, another thing I really want to do actually real quick is I want to jump over to Dave. Now, of course, I did a Dave live stream series really quickly. Um, basically, what I want to do is sign a few people. I want to sign Eric Tyler. Obvious reasons. He can be an absolute star for us in the future. So we'll get him in real quick. Um, go an exclusive written deal. Um, we'll offer him, I guess, he'll probably want more than that, to be honest, but exclusive written contract. Going to want 15000 per month. That's perfectly fine. It's pretty cheap, actually. So uh, 10 years, probably not 10 years. Let's go. I want to give him a long contract. I want to give him seven, I think. 43 years old. Uh, he'll still be able to work in the tag division and stuff like that. So, there we go. I think that's pretty good. And that actually will kind of give us another heel that we can really work with. And uh, and try and try and get him up to a, to a decent level. Uh, the next one is Vengeance. Obviously, Skull the Bones. We'll, uh, we'll probably bring him in as Skull the Bones. Actually, no. I think we'll leave him as Vengeance. I like Vengeance. He's very over in the tri-state New England, but, uh, you know, he still needs a, a bit of work. He's only, he's only 25 years old, so we can't really discredit him too much. Does have 92 star quality, so very important signing there as well. Uh, he can be given a 10-year contract, as we are. We pretty much want to get him for as long as possible. So 15,000 as well. Um, pretty much all these sort of independent guys, um, they'll want about 15k for a 10-year contract. So it uh, it kind of works out nicely. Now, Monty Walker is actually on our roster. Um, he's going to be, I guess, fairly, I guess, loosely involved in both the Cruiserweight title picture in the future and also the Hardcore title picture in the future. Obviously, it kind of looks like a Hardcore wrestler, if you will. Uh, but I think... I think for now, we'll, um, we'll leave him on a... Just on a normal contract, a handshake deal. Um, although I think, he, actually, is he on a written deal? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me uh, let me go back and quickly double check him on our roster. So we need Monty. Reset that. Grab Monty. Um, he's on a written contract. Okay. So he's on a written contract, but he can actually still work over there for Dave, which is good because it'll potentially help him grow a little bit more in the ring. Um, let's go back to companies. Actually, the one person I do want to get, uh, and this is a kind of a, a nod to the actual, the actual Dave live stream series, and that was Morpheus. So I want to grab Morpheus. Morpheus kind of turned out pretty good on that series. So I think we want to get him, and again, get him on an exclusive written contract. Doesn't have the best star quality in the world, but could definitely be a part of our hardcore division down the line. And I think I actually 
want Morpheus and Eric Tyler to, to be in a tag team together, uh, at least to kick us off at the start. Again, I know that's another, another heel team, but I think it should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. And um, I think Eric Tyler will potentially help Morpheus develop into a, a much better worker. So it's a kind of a no-brainer, that one. Um, and as you can see, he's, he is American Buffalo. If you are sort of familiar with TCW, you know exactly who American Buffalo is. Uh, but there are three signings. And I think for now, we'll just leave it at those three guys. Uh, we might want to sign Mitch Nace at some stage as well to, to come in as our announcer. Uh, speaking of announcers, let's quickly check before we go back into the roster. So we do have Jason Azaria and we also have Kyle Rhodes. So Kyle is our color commentator and obviously Jason is our announcer. I would like to get Mitch Nace in because we all know how good Mitch Nace becomes in the future. So I'm wondering if he'll kind of develop that well and essentially eclipse uh, Azaria at some stage in his career. I mean, he's only six points behind him right now. Anyway, before this episode gets too long, it's going to be hopefully only, only an hour and a half long. Uh, but let's go back to the roster. So let's go to stars now. All right, we've got Brian Vesey in there. Cobra, Joey Flame, Larry Vesey, Richie Pangrezio Jr., uh, who I don't actually have anything for in this first month. Um, but I think him being a face, uh, we can use him next month, uh, potentially against Ripcord as well, which would be a pretty high level storyline for him. We've got Teddy Flame and then we've got Viper. So three of our tag teams essentially in our stars, which is a good sign, uh, but we're only going to use one of them in the actual tag team title storyline. Uh, one of the other ones does, one of the other tag teams does have another storyline for themselves which we'll get into in a second. Uh, but moving into well-known, we've got Charlie Homicide, big part of the uh, hardcore division, as you can see, quite over as well. Uh, we've got Romeo Heartthrob, who's going to play a major role in the international title storyline. And then we've got Whistler, who is also going to be involved in that international title storyline. It's kind of fitting, seeing as he's got an American flag, obviously very patriotic, wants to uh, to represent the United States as the uh, the international champion. Up next, we've got recognizable. We've got BLZ Bub, who is kind of the uh, the big, men well, it says right there, big menacing powerhouse. Where uh, we're going to really push him. I think his other name is Tyson. Tyson Bane, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but obviously, we're going to run with BLZ Bub, uh, which is I, I guess it's essentially like what they call the devil. Devil if I'm not mistaken. It's kind of the devil's nickname, I guess. Uh, but he has a manager in Karen Killer. So he's kind of... His, uh, his storyline's a little bit weird. He's just going to be just kind of destroying everybody in singles matches going forward. So we, we don't really have to pay attention to him for probably the first maybe two or three months. And then after that, we'll, uh, we'll give him a proper, a proper storyline against a legitimate opponent. Uh, we then have Demon Anger, Demon Spite, of course, the... Demons of Rage. And uh, they're going to be involved in the tag team title storyline. Already mentioned Golden Fox. We've got J.K. Stallings. Of course, the, the owner. He's got a little bit of uh, popularity about him. Uh, but he's absolutely dreadful on the microphone. So I don't exactly, don't exactly know what we're going to use him for. Uh, we've got Liberty here, who I don't really have anything for either. But he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Could probably be involved in the, um, the hardcore title storyline as well. And then we've got Danger Kid as well, who is uh, is also, I guess, going to be involved in the hardcore title storyline as well at some stage. Maybe not from the uh, from the beginning. Uh, and then I guess we've got all the unimportant people, which is pretty much the rest of the roster, to be honest. There's uh, there's not a whole lot, not a whole lot left. I mean, the only really notice noticeable ones is uh, Ricky Dale Johnson, Cowboy Ricky Dale. Uh, we've got Danny Rushmore as well, who's going to be involved in the uh, the hardcore title storyline in the future. Uh, and then finally, Jack Bruce, who's also going to be involved at the moment in the hardcore title storyline as well, just because he, uh, he really doesn't have any popularity. 
Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, we have Peter Valentine as well, who's absolutely dreadful, of course. Um, as you can see, good friend of Sam Strong, the man of that JK Stalling sign him as part of contract negotiations. Therefore, Peter Valentine is now in the company. And uh, as you can see, is a scumbag, dreadful, in the ring, notorious ribber as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just, I, I kind of want to job him out straight to uh, BLZ Bub, but he's a heel as well. Now, the thing I do want to do is I want to try and change this because obviously we use a face heel divide, but I, it, it's currently strictly enforced and I want it to be loosely enforced. And luckily we can do that. Sometimes as the uh, the head booker of a company, you can't actually change things when it comes to the product. So we're lucky. We're lucky. I uh, just looking at the product here, it's it's actually uh interesting. Um it's interesting that the the TV shows are 75% matches to 25% angles. I thought it might have been a little bit more favored towards angles knowing that it's part of you know the hollywood culture um looking at this uh each show will need at least three different match aims to be used um that could potentially be a little bit difficult a little bit um the fans are also open-minded so they'll, they'll accept any match type which is okay so I kind of like that as well. Anyway, let's uh, let's quickly get into the show, and then I'll uh, I'll show you the storylines here. Well, I haven't actually. I wanted to work with with you guys. Obviously, I've written them down, and I know exactly what's going on. Uh, we've got Demon Spite here being brought before Wrestlers Court, uh, accused of moaning about stuff all the time, and uh, the judge Sam Strong there issuing him uh, to pay for drinks for everybody. He gets a small positive impact as well. So finally, just before we start here, Sam Strong needs to go with Dusty Streets, and we need a positive, uh, positive meddling. Still no effect. I mean, it seems like it rarely works for me. On the other series I do, doesn't really work too often. Also, Tribal Warrior, apparently working for for Burning Hammer, which is very good because that'll improve him, uh, but a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, we are expecting we are expecting 1,200 fans. Now, I do like to, to book areas, so I think I want to kind of stick towards that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where. Well, it, there's no real, I guess, Hollywood sort of area here, which is unfortunate. Um, but I guess we would just probably go Los Angeles. I think. Los Angeles is probably the, the default we should run every single show in, I think. Kind of makes the most sense. Obviously, being from Hollywood, you know, being right next to, to Los Angeles. I don't know. It just makes sense. So we'll go with that. And, uh, I mean, luckily it can take up to 100,000 attendants. So we should never need to worry about that in the future. All right, storylines. So... The first thing we need to do is remove a whole lot of people. So Golden Fox needs to be removed out of this one. Jason Jackson, Monty Walker, and that leaves us with our four competitors, which will be contested in a fatal four-way for the Cruiserweight title. We've got Dark Eagle, Electrico, or Electrico, Mr. Lucha, and Ramon, pa uh, Ramon Payers. I'm going to go with Payers. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but I'm going to go with Payers. Probably Pez. Ah, we'll go with Payers. Sounds a little bit more uh, Spanish, I guess. All right, up next we've got Demon Rising, which is BLZ Bub, Karen Killer. Again, this one's very, very easy. Uh, it's basically just BLZ Bub running through everybody. Uh, it's primarily going to be stuck to TV. I don't think we're going to have him on the pay per view. Uh, Maybe, maybe an angle on the pay-per-view with Karen Killer as well. Possibly. Uh, but no match. Uh, so East Coast Warriors is the hardcore title. Um, I think we can actually just leave everybody in this storyline. We've got 
We've only got two faces in Jack Bruce and Danger Kid. Um, and then all the rest are actually heels. Uh, but I think that's fine. As long as we have two faces, because Charlie and Danny Rushmore, they're going to be our two sort of main heels, if you will. Uh, we also need to take Charlie out of this title here as well. Uh, this storyline as well. This title storyline. Um, so seeing as this is the uh, the Gold Rush, this is our world title storyline. Uh, we're going to take everybody out except for Dusty Streets and Ripcord. Might be wondering, oh, what, what are we doing with Sam Strong? Sam Strong is going to have his own little title. Um, this one I've already cleaned up a little bit. So we're going to stick with Golden Fox, Romeo Heartthrob, and Whistler. Uh, and then I've basically got all the tag teams uh, in Tag Team Gold Rush, except for, uh, what do you call them, Stink and Grunt. So they're, they're going to be a part of the, the hardcore. Everybody else is going to be a part of that. Uh, I just want to quickly change. How do I change him into a main role? I guess I have to remove him and then add him again. There we go. All right, let me just check everybody else has got a major role in this one. Yep, all good. Uh, that one's all good. Major role, major role. This one, major role. Lucha's got a supporting role, so let's quickly fix that up as well. Major role, Hayes. Hayes or Payers? Ramon Payers, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to keep calling him Payers probably to the, for the rest of the series, so that's what it is now. Anyway, they're all the, uh, the, the titles that are sort of fixed up that start with the game. Um, the next one we're going to do, I can't really see my keyboard because my microphone's blocking it at the moment. But uh, this one's going to be called, actually I have no idea what it's going to be called. Uh, but it's going to consist of Sam Strong and the Black Serpent Cult. So... Uh, maybe, let's call it Don't Get Bitten. So yeah, don't, don't get bitten. I like that. And it's going to be, like I said, Sam Strong. Uh, we're going to need Viper. And we're going to need, what's the other one called? I've completely forgotten his name, Cobra. <laughs> Should have known. Anyway, as you can tell, They're already playing a major role in another storyline. Hmm. Okay, hold on a second. All right, we have to go out. Um, sorry. Let me let me take Viper out. Let me take Cobra out. Probably should have done this as well before making the the storyline. Um. Oh, oopsie daisies, we, uh, we accidentally took Ripcord out and left Sam Strong in there. I don't, I'm not sure if that was me or if that was Sam Strong just trying to, to keep, uh, keep hold of the, uh, the world title aspirations. Anyway, uh, don't get bitten. Again, we'll re rename the storyline. And now it should work pretty late. Yeah, pretty easy. All right. Viper, Cobra. There we go. Okay. Uh, then we have one more storyline. Uh, I've got no idea. Uh, actually, I, I know exactly what we're going to call this one. This one, I guess, is a little bit uh, more relating to, to AEW, but it's going to be that one there. Cowboy, cowboy shit. And obviously, it's going to consist of Cowboy Ricky Dale. And uh, he'll be going up against Jimmy, Jimmy Power. Didn't really show you Jimmy Power, but he's, uh, I think he's 51 or 52 years old. So we want to try and uh, to job him out a little bit. Pretty much from the get-go, really. Uh, but there's another storyline. They'll have a match at the pay-per-view as well. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to all these storylines. I feel like I, I took a, a little bit of time to, to sort of write them, write them up and go through the roster and sort of Think about what was actually going to have to happen. Anyway, I think for this first show, we're, this is a little bit weird, but we're actually going to team 
uh, Sam Strong and Dusty Streets together. And they're actually going to take on, where are they? The Black Serpent Cult. So we'll give this, I think we can give it 16 because I think everybody has good enough stamina at the moment. If I'm not mistaken, even though they're all basically retirement age. So uh, we'll give it 16 minutes. I know we can probably do uh, a little bit less. Uh, really too sure who the better referee is. Uh, so Archie, I think, is the best road agent we have, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Dewey's got 64 refereeing. Um, who's our other ref? Pat Deacon is our road agent. Pat Deacon's actually better. Okay, interesting. Uh, and then Sam Sparrow is the other referee with 81. So Sparrow needs to be used, and then Pat Deacon needs to be used as well. So yeah, the winner in this one is going to be Sam Strong, obviously. It uh, doesn't really matter who loses. Uh, we will call it in the ring because I think they're all good enough. And it's uh, it's going to be decisive. So this is going to going to kind of kick off the uh, the whole storyline with Sam Strong and the Black Serpent Cult. And at the same time, it gives Dusty Street a main event victory. Again, these two don't like each other. Hopefully that's not going to play a big part. But that is our main event. That is our main event. I think uh, going into the main event, we probably want a Sam Strong, uh, Dusty Streets angle together. Yes, kind of them cutting a promo onto their opponents. Um, seeing as it's those two, and they are both pretty good, don't actually need to give them any success. But uh, actually, you know what? We can actually put up Viper and Cobra in here as well. Uh, they can be off screen. And then we can actually give Sam Strong uh, a bit of success because that'll advance his storyline uh, with Don't Get Bitten. So that, that actually works out pretty well. All right, the rest of the show, um, we're going to have a international title match. We're going to have Whistler taking on Jimmy Power. This will determine the first ever international champion. Yeah, we'll go Sam Sparrow, Pat Deacon. Want it to be want it to be pretty good. And then Whistler's gonna go over fairly fairly convincingly. I'll show you Jimmy Power here. Like I said, he is 52 years old. Uh, but he is pretty good. A little bit lacking on the um the old stamina. But he does pass on knowledge, so could be pretty useful, you know, maybe getting a few proteges, hopefully early on. Guys like uh, Morpheus coming in would be perfect for him to to take under his wing. Uh, so I think we can call, and we'll go decisive as well. So Whistler becoming our first international champion. Very cool indeed. And uh, with that being said, we'll give uh, we'll give Whistler an angle as well, just by himself, just for six minutes, and that should be okay. Again, I've probably got to keep the uh, the angles to a minimum. But I think for Whistler, he's got enough popularity. He's good enough on the microphone with his entertainments. It's kind of a no-brainer. So we uh, we really want to use him. And hopefully, he will be hopefully the first main event guy that we've brought up from the uh, from the mid-card. All right, let's get some, uh, some tag team action going here as well. I think we need... We, we, uh, what I would like to do as well, I know off-topic, booking tag team matches, but... I want to start every single show with uh with a cruiserweight match. It's a little bit maybe we won't be able to do it because we need three match types. Uh, but basically, it's either we work the crowd with the cruiserweights or we do a high spots with them. Not hundred percent sure what we do. We could actually maybe start off with hardcore. Sure if fans would be be that interested in seeing hardcore matches. Uh, but what we do need to do is we need a BLZ bub match. So I think the the best way to kick this off is to maybe have him... He's going to eventually take on Danger Kid, but we probably don't want to do that first. So what we will do is have... I mean, Electrico kind of seems like the, the best choice. I think I want to start... We'll go Peter Valentine to kick things off, I guess. Um, and we'll just go like a six-minute match. Uh, with BLZ Bub just dominating, basically. 
Um, what we also need to do maybe is uh, a mayhem match. Yeah, we'll make this a mayhem match because Peter Valentine is dreadful. He's really bad. So mayhem basically, um, as you can see, the format allows workers' weaknesses to be hidden and also limits how good the bout can be. So, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Um, and again, got BLZ Bub dominating. It's going to be script and decisive. So it's essentially a squash match. Pretty happy for that one to get in there. Um, and again, I kind of want to give an angle to BLZ Bub and Aaron Killer. But we'll, I guess that one can wait. We'll wait and see how we go. So I think we want to kick things off maybe with a... I'd like to go a triple threat match, to be honest. Let's have Electrico take on Golden Fox to take on maybe Monty Walker. I think Monty has good high flying as well. Yeah, really good. That looks like a pretty good cruiserweight match. Now, like I said... I can either start off with the cruiserweights or we can do a high spots match. And like I said as well, we we do need some of our matches. We need three different match types throughout the show. So high spots can be one of those matches. Now, as far as the winner goes, uh, I think we want to go with... I wanted to go with Ele Electrico, but... I don't know, Monty Walker kind of seems maybe like the better option. You know what I'll do? I'm actually going to change this match up and we're going to put in Mr. Lucha instead of Electrico. And then, then we, we actually have a clear winner. I mean, it is face versus face versus face, but it's, uh, it's perfectly fine. Uh, it's going to need to be scripted and decisive there. And can miss, yeah, miss, Mr. Lucha is high spots. What am I talking about? I was going to just ask that silly question. There we go. So that's our first ever match there. Uh, now we need we need some tag team action. Now one thing I do want to do is give the Vessies a victory here. Of course we have so many, so many tag teams. They can actually verse the Nation of Filth. That seems like a, a good way to go about it. So the Vessies versus the Nation of Filth. Um, Sam Sparrow, Pat Deacon, and then we'll go Brian Vessi to get the win because he is the younger brother. We're, we're essentially going to try and push Brian to the moon, more or less. So just a nice 12-minute win. Actually, we can probably reduce that to about 10. Uh, we do only have... We've got two hours of TV, so we'll see how we go. Um, with that, we can actually do an angle before that match with uh, with everybody, basically. So we'll go, we'll go Coach Dick Pangrezio. Uh, we'll go Richie Pangrezio Jr. And we'll go Brian. And then we'll go Larry. I almost forgot his name. Um, and theoretically, I'd like them all to be on entertainment. Not 100% sure if we can do that. Let me, uh, let me take a quick look at the Vessi brothers. Yeah. Brian's a little bit on the low side. And, sorry... Larry's a little bit on the low side, and Brian is very much on the low side. So they can't talk. What about our boy, Richie? All right, Richie. Richie can talk very well, so I guess we'll just leave it as those two. And they can kind of get, get I guess, kind of get the Vessies over in that regard. There we go. Um, give them a little bit of success. They're going to advance the tag team title storyline. Which is pretty good. Uh, we've still got a little bit of... We've got 29 more minutes left. What do we want to do? Yeah, see, so we need three... Three different match aims. Now we've got high spots. I guess we could maybe do... Story is storytelling a match aim? Probably not, right? I guess it is. And uh, of course, we have the mayhem match as well, so we can actually use storytelling pretty well. I'm kind of used to doing storytelling matches for the uh, the local to global series anyway, so that works out well. We've got the cruiserweights for high spots, and uh, we can either use mayhem or like a car crash type match if we are uh, if we need to. 
Okie dokie, let's move on. Uh, what, are, what other stuff have we got to do? Uh, I mean, we, we have maybe Jack Bruce, but Jack is not exactly... I don't know, he's not exactly... I guess what I would like to do maybe is kick off the show with a Ripcord promo. So we can just chuck that in real quick now. Um, give him eight minutes as well. Hopefully eight minutes. This will kick off the show, uh, so everything else will come after that. Basically just Ripcord announcing that he's going to win the title at the, uh, the pay-per-view. Um, we can actually... Let's write it in. I do like writing in angles sometimes. Not, not all the time, but just sometimes. And it kind of sucks when I can't really see my keyboard, but uh, let's go. Announces he is going to win the world title. All right. Don't know why there's a double space there, but anyway, we'll get rid of that and book that segment. So yeah, Ripcord just coming out to open the show. He's not actually involved in a match or anything like that. All right. I guess we could maybe just go another tag team match. I would like the Demons of Rage going up against someone. But we are, uh, we're already using both of our other base tag teams apart from the Blazing Flames. And I do want to keep the Blazing Flames pretty strong. So I guess we'll we'll just we'll see what faces we have, and we'll just go from there. Basically, uh, let's go Jason Jackson and Danger Kid. Basically, they can just verse those two. Danger Kid actually has some decent popularity, which I find very uh very strange. All right, so Anger's got forty. Okay, so Anger needs to get the pinfall, I think. And the loser can be Jason Jackson, who I don't think has very... Yeah, he's got pretty bad popularity. I think we need to get maybe a few more faces in the company as well. Maybe some uh, some sort of younger guys. Maybe you guys could leave a suggestion down in the comments below. Any young faces that could come in and do a decent job. Obviously, there are a few that come to mind pretty easily. Sammy Back uh, would be a an incredible signing. Um... Zeus Maximilian, again, another guy I'm very familiar with from the uh, the local global series. He'd he'd be pretty young. Uh, who else? But we we do have we do have Tommy Cornell as well. I probably could have actually put Tommy in that match. Um, potentially, we'll uh we'll, we'll work towards Tommy. He doesn't actually have a storyline in this first month because I I really just wanted to to get immersed into the roster and you know book. Seven matches for the pay-per-view, seven different storylines, uh, sort of of my own, instead of following what the other uh, game or the database wanted me to do. Anyway, uh, we have that match. Let's put that right there. I think we we essentially just need one more match and then we can start. So maybe let's run. I could actually give Ripcord a match. Uh. Let's give Ripcord a match. Ripcord versus our uh, electric, uh, yeah, Electrico. Electrico. I'm going to struggle to say that name for some reason. I have no idea why. But yeah, 10 minute match. Ripcord coming out, destroying, not destroying, but it's a kind of an open match, if you will. And uh, getting the win against the other uh, 21 year old. So Electrico not, not doing too well, shall we say. Uh, but there we go. That is the uh, the first show there. I think it looks really good for a, for a first show anyway. So let's uh, let's run it. Get through it nice and quick. We start off with a 100 rated angle, as you would probably kind of expect coming from Ripcord with his popularity and of course his uh, entertainment skills as well. And Ripcord comes out. Goes on a, a long spiel about why he thinks he's going to become the world champion. And he, he more or less guarantees that he will be the first ever HGC world champion. And uh, he's going to win it for the uh, the big bucks at the pay-per-view. All right, we move into his match. Does really well. We get a 77. And we have Ripcord defeating Electrico in 938 by pinfall with a Ripcord DDT. 
93 in-ring performance there from Ripcord. I mean, what else? What else can you say? The guy is his money. And um, between him and Sam Strong, it's going to be, it is going to be real hard not to, to put the belt, you know, straight on, you know, straight on Ripcord, basically. Because obviously we know Sam Strong is not going to be in the title picture for, for a little while. All right, we move on to a tag team match where we get a 61 rating. We have the Demons of Rage defeating Jason Jackson and the Danger Kid in 1014 when Demon Anger and Jason Jackson with a double Demon down. Really good match. Um, we've got a tag team specialist there for the Demons of Rage and Danger Kid actually benefiting from being the flavor of the month. That's kind of the first time I've ever seen that. Because I don't think I've ever seen it on my local global series. That's pretty cool to see. I like that. Even though he lost, despite being the flavor of the month. We might have to give him a win. All right, we then move into a 69 rated angle where we have the all-star team together. Of course, Coach Dick Pangrazio, Richie Pangrazio Jr. And then, of course, we have Brian and Larry Vessi. Unfortunately, Richie Pangrazio struggled when going off script, uh, but he is getting better at his gimmick. So these guys all come out. Both uh, both Pangrazios kind of say that uh, you know they're they're looking to make a real big mark here in the Hollywood Grappling Company, and they believe that the Vessi brothers have exactly what it takes to become tag team champions. We then move into their tag team match, getting a 50 rating. So it's yeah, it's not too great. Uh, but we do have the Vessi brothers defeating the Nation of Filth in 1018 when Brian Vessi pinned Grunt with a Vessi driver and then Stink, uh, Stink sorry, being the weak link there. It was the, uh, the bigger boy, the, the chubbier boy, shall we say. Uh, but Vessi, Larry Vessi seemed off his game. Um, they got a tag team specialist bonus as well. Um, apparently Brian and Dick Pangrazio are an awkward pairing. They have zero chemistry, so... We're going to have to take them. Maybe we'll take Coach Dick maybe off managing both of them. I guess he can just continue to manage his son, uh, but he'll also be the mouthpiece kind of for the for the Vessi brothers as well. Uh, but yeah, good stuff there. Um, apparently, Brian Vessi has a hot new move as well, so we're happy about that. Hopefully benefit him a little bit going forward with these matches. All right, we then go into a, a pretty underwhelming match, shall we say. We only get a 31 out of this one, but it is it is a squash match, so it's kind of fine. Uh, where we have BLZ Bub defeating Peter Valentine in 612 by pinfall with a Hades bomb. Again, it is what it is. Domination by BLZ Bub. Uh, we move on. And uh, yeah, the chaos of the match helped hide how bad Peter Valentine was actually performing. So there we go. And they got a 15. Uh, but a good 46 there from Bub. I think that's uh, positive signs, shall we say. All right, we then go into our high spots match, the big cruiserweight contest, triple threat, getting a 69. That is kind of how good the cruiserweights can actually be for us, man. These high spot matches are really... I mean, they, they have the capacity to, to rate higher than a lot of other matches on our card, if we're being honest. Uh, just the talent that we have on the roster. Um, that Fatal 4-Way match is its going to be pretty good. Anyway, we have Mr. Lucha defeating both Golden Fox and Monty Walker in 12-10. When Mr. Lucha pinned Monty with a master drop. Obviously, Mr. Lucha carrying the match. Although he carried the match and also seemed off his game. So, inconsistency there from uh, one of the best Lucha Libre wrestlers in the world. But uh, it's, it's all good. And he'll be a part of the uh, the Fatal 4-Way for the, uh, the first ever Cruiserweight Champion. Okay, we then move into a 60-rated Whistler angle. And again, his angle is kind of just very patriotic, very you know, USA, USA chants break out everywhere. And uh, he basically just says how much he loves America and how he wants to, he wants to represent America as the first ever international champion. His match getting a 58 there. And we have Whistler defeating Jimmy Power in 11.53 by pinfall with a rebel yell. And Whistler wins the HGC international title. 
So there we go. New champion, Whistler. And uh, a big victory there over the veteran in Jimmy Power. Both of them actually getting a, a 48 in-ring performance. So it's a, it's a pretty good match to get a 58 from both 48s. Uh, we also have Jason Azaria and Kyle Rhodes uh, apparently working extremely well together at the announcer's table. So I guess that's... that announcer chemistry? It must be. Either way, I'm pretty happy with that if that's the uh, the actual case there. Alrighty, we then go into the pre-main event angle. We get a 95, which is very, very solid. Obviously not, not exactly the same as the, the 100 by Ripcord, but it's got Dusty Streets in it. Dusty's a little bit lower on the, the popularity scale compared to Sam Strong. Uh, but we also had Sam Strong not doing very well without a script to follow, which is interesting. And yeah, Dusty was actually superb. So, yeah, make of that what you will, but yeah, it's a, it's a 95. It's really going to help the overall show rating as well. And hopefully it'll actually gain Dusty a little bit of popularity uh, as well as the, the main event match itself. And the main event for our first ever TV show does very well. Highest rated match on the, on the card. So we'll take that. We get an 82 rated main event here. And I think an 82 for our first show is pretty decent in regards to the main event. We have Sam Strong and Dusty Streets defeating Black Serpent Cult in 1533 and Sam Strong pinned Viper with a strong arm tactic. Obviously, Sam Strong carrying the match with a 99 in-ring performance. A 99. Absolutely incredible. Obviously, carrying the match. He's shone in the match as well. Um, and yeah, Cobra Viper tag team specialist bonus as well. Let me just check here real quick. I want to check the dirt sheet. I want to see... Yes. Okay. So we do have some issues. Declining physical ability. Declining physical ability. Declining physical ability. Declining physical ability. This is what I'm talking about. The whole roster, or at least two thirds of the roster, I would say, is pretty much in time decline. So we really need to, to not only bring in a couple of new young faces, but we also need to, you know, build the, the guys that we have that are in that sort of 20 to 30 year old range as well. And then, of course, we're bringing in Vengeance. We're bringing in Eric Tyler. We're bringing in Morpheus. Those three guys, all very young, very talented. Actually, Eric's not exactly very young. He's only 36. So he's kind of in the peak of his career, I would say, just before that sort of time decline area. So I would like to, to push Eric pretty, pretty hard. Anyway. Enough, uh, enough rambling on. Let's finish the show. We actually get an 82 rated show as well for our first ever TV show. That is pretty insane. I honestly didn't really expect it to be that good. And as you can see, it increases our popularity in 17 regions. Uh, we would have actually gained in 18 regions, uh, but one of the regions was restricted due to growth, you know, limited number of viewers being there. Perfectly fine, but uh, yeah, that that's a really good first show. Really good. All right, what do we got here? Uh, we got GCG coming in for Morpheus as well on an exclusive handshake deal. Very uh, very strange. Obviously, he's not gonna not gonna go for any of those deals, so we don't have to worry about those. Uh, Eric Tyler, CGC, and Dave. Uh, but I don't think they can offer exclusive written contracts. Yeah, they can only offer handshake exclusives. So, yeah, we're essentially going to sign both those guys. Real good. And uh, I guess Vengeance, same sort of deal for uh, for Dave. Yeah, there we go. It is what it is. You know, I mean, you, you guys, if you watched my uh, Dave series, you'll know all about you know, Dave getting raided for all their best talent. So there we go. Anyway, HDC Hollywood TV getting an initial TV rating of 1.17. That's a pretty good TV rating for our first show. 882,000 viewers. Pretty close to a mil. So we'll, uh, we'll try and push towards a million, I think. Supreme TV. Absolutely destroying us, unfortunately. The 97... Rated main event. 
And of course, the, uh, the whole goal of the series is to essentially become the number one company and knock SWF from the other uh, perch. It's a pretty similar comparison, I guess, to, to real life times. HGC would be considered the AEW and SWF would be considered the WWE. And that's probably the, the best comparison you can kind of make uh, for, for these, these sort of terms. I guess another comparison would probably be uh, early days WCW going up against the uh, WWF. Obviously, Sam Strong coming to... Uh, I believe Sam Strong used to work for SWF, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, as you can see, made him a hero to millions in the 80s with SWF. So he is essentially the, the Hulk Hogan, if you will. Anyway, let me advance here real quick and I'll, I'll kind of talk about a few more things. But yeah, if you guys could smash the like button, it'd be much appreciated. Show your support for the new series. Uh, really trying to uh, get these episodes pre-recorded. Uh, because, well, this, this first episode is not pre-recorded. It's going to be released straight away. Uh, but the, the following episodes are probably going to be pre-recorded. Because unfortunately, I have to go away regionally for work. Uh, this is the interesting thing. Do we go Vengeance as a heel? I think I do want to do this, and there's a good reason why. I think Vengeance and BLZ Bub could essentially be a perfect ready-made tag team for each other. They're both big guys, big units, and I mean, they're, they're going to be a dominating tag team. It, it kind of, it seems perfect, but then at the same time, I could bring him in as a face, and essentially have him maybe go up against Bill Z Bub in the future. There's a lot of different possibilities. I think we can still do that by turning him face in the future. So I think for now we'll bring him in as a heel. Again, Morpheus coming in as a heel. Then finally Eric Tyler will come in as a heel as well. Uh, but yeah, let me advance a few days and take a quick sip of water here. And we'll book our second and final show of the episode. All right, so here's Eric Tyler as well. Uh, one thing we will do is add them in a team. Like I said, I already I already wanted uh, Eric to be with Morpheus pretty much from the from the get go, um, and their name is going to be All Business. I didn't want a capital letter there. There we go, All Business. Eric Tyler, Morpheus. They're both in suits, so I feel like it. It kind of fits, really. And actually, looking at this, we've actually already got a ready-made tag teams with two other separate people. We've got the modern day Cowboys with Cowboy Ricky Dale and Vengeance, which is super strange. That must be from a, from a long time ago, potentially before Vengeance became Vengeance. And then we also have Violence Unlimited with BLZ Bub and Morpheus. Interesting. But yeah, there is all business. We've got Morpheus in the suit, Eric Tyler in the suit. All business coming to the ring to take care of their business, get the job done. Uh, one more thing we should probably check. I want to check the uh, the local workers in our area because I want to try and hopefully use a lot of local workers. And that'd be a pretty good way of us having sort of face talent coming in to verse guys like BLZ Bub. I feel like it would be a pretty good way of doing things. Um, so I guess we can actually check that at the uh, at this next show. All right, what do we got? Incident with Jack Bruce, uh, helping to create a fun and relaxed atmosphere backstage with a karaoke machine. Of course, he's a, a former rock star. And then we've got Peter Valentine, of course, Sam, Sam Strong's friend. That somehow managed to get on the roster. Uh, being brought before wrestlers court. And getting a small positive impact as well. Good to see Sam Strong doing a good job. Being the uh, the judge of our court. Um, speaking of that. We want to go for Dusty Streets. And Sam Strong yet again. Still no effect unfortunately. Kind of sucks. Really want to try and get that sorted out. 
Uh, once again, we're just going to continue to run in. Where are we? Where is LA? There we go. Uh, I wonder if we could just, I wonder if there's a way of just making that our generic venue. You could probably just do it in the TV show. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, doesn't matter too much. Uh, this main event. Uh, I haven't really thought about this show. I thought about the first show for the most part, but I do like to, to kind of book on the fly. Uh, for this show, I think we want to maybe go... I was thinking Ricky Dale against Ripcord, but Ricky's... His popularity is a little bit too low, I think. Maybe Liberty. Let's do Liberty versus Ripcord, because we're not actually using Liberty pretty much for this whole month. So that'll be a pretty good main event. Um, don't think Ripcord gained any popularity from that first show. So he's at 94, no, 93, sorry. Still at 93. Um, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate, but hopefully, hopefully over the course of the month, he'll, uh, he'll start to improve. All right, so let's go Ripcord there. Um, want to keep it open. We want to call it in the... I think we can call it with Liberty. Liberty's pretty good, should be said. It can just call, maybe. Liberty's a guy we really need to push as well. So hopefully this match will do a, a decent job for him. And uh, boosting up his popularity. All right, so we already called it. Slow build. Uh, we'll go a we'll go a decisive win. Uh, but I also want to do something else. I want to have a distraction onto Ripcord by Dusty Streets, and this is a this is essentially going to start off their storyline. We might even have a, an angle following the main event, which is something I don't really do too often. Uh, but we'll have a, a bit of a stare down, um, and maybe a few words exchanged between Dusty and Ripcord. Give them both a, a little bit of success. Eight minutes. Um, and of course, that'll advance the Gold Rush storyline. Make that Pat Deacon, I guess. I mean, I could potentially give Liberty an angle before the match. He does have really good entertainment skills and star quality. But I don't think we will. I feel like Liberty could nearly be the future figurehead of the company because he is a face. I wonder if he is he easily marketable. He's an amazing baby face, so that's obviously great. He's a marketing dream, so he would make a very good figurehead as well. We can maybe just boost that star quality above 90 and hopefully get that charisma, just that charisma up a little bit. 85 charisma, perfect. Above 90 star quality would be absolutely perfect as well. But he looks good. We'll, uh, we'll definitely give him a storyline next month, I think. We might even get him involved in the international title storyline, potentially, uh, for next month. All right, speaking of the international title, we need, uh, we need to do something. So what we'll do is we need an angle, and uh, it's essentially going to be an attacking angle. So we need Romeo, and we need... Uh, actually, let's have let's have it like this first. So Whistler is going to be there. Whistler is going to be the one attacked. I think we'll go. I would like to go selling. We'll go selling. I, I don't really like doing fighting angles like this. I feel like it really does. It doesn't work. They can only be four minutes long, and it, it just doesn't seem to work properly. The, the ratings always seem to be worse than they actually should be. Uh, we'll go him and Jimmy. They're going to both be rated on fighting, so they're going to essentially take out uh, Whistler there. So they'll both get a bit of success, uh, but then we'll also have Cowboy come in and uh, essentially make the save. So he'll get a, a little bit of success there for himself as well. Um, this is, of course, going to advance two storylines, essentially. Uh, both that one and the International Incidents one as well. Um, and that'll lead to a tag team match between the two teams. Of course, the uh, the face team and the heel team. So let's go for Cowboy Ricky Dale and the current champion, where is he? Whistler. Taking on the heel team of 
Jimmy Power and Romeo Heartthrob. There we go. Good match. 12 minutes. A lot of mid carders in there. Uh, ooh, winner of the match. I think Romeo Heartthrob. Um, Cowboy Ricky Dale can lose. We'll make it tainted though. Uh, I'm not sure if we can script. This is something I really need to get used to. I really need to, to maybe study everybody's psychology in a little bit more detail. Uh, but yeah, I think for sure these guys can call. Kind of only just. These two are a little bit on the low side of psychology. So let me go back in. We'll call the match. Tainted win. And that is how we'll leave things. Uh, so that'll go there. The, uh, the, the attacking angle will come, I guess, a bit earlier in the show. Potentially before uh, another match. Because we want to split it up a little bit. It doesn't really make sense to have a, a fighting angle for them to go straight out into the ring. Alright, so we need a... Well, um, I wanted to do a hardcore title match as well. Let's just do this. Let me let me see what we can do here, actually. I want to go like this. I want to add a new match. Um, I mean, there's no real option to have a Falls Count Anywhere match. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a strange one. Anyway, doesn't matter. We'll, uh, what we'll do is we'll throw in tables, we'll throw in ladders, we'll throw in weapons, we'll throw in strap chain, we'll throw in thumbtacks, barbed wire. I think that's pretty good. So that, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, uh, but the only thing is, there's no real... Yeah, there's no real, you know, balls count anywhere type style. Um, I guess we can call it balls count anywhere. But, yeah, I mean, it won't be a, a real sort of match type. Um... I guess we could, could maybe do something here. See, I would, I would like to maybe change it from ringside to maybe car park backstage. Because that would kind of simulate a Falls Count Anywhere match. But it, it's also going to start in the ring, so I don't really know what to do. I think we'll go car park backstage. Okay, so injury risk must be average. Injury risk average. Uh, injury risk must be high for barbed wire. Content risk must be low. Okay, must be higher than that. Content, <laughs> content risk must be high for a barbed wire match. We could potentially get rid of the barbed wire. Let's get rid of the barbed wire, actually. Like that. Yeah, I like that better. No barbed wire, but yeah, it is what it is. It's it's a full scan anywhere match. They can use whatever the hell they want. So there we go. Um and for this one, let's let's throw in now hardcore guys, shall we? So we've got Charlie Homicide. We've got Danny Rushmore. We've got uh we've got Grunt. We've got uh who else have we got? got Danger Kid, we've got, uh, where is he? We need, uh, we need Jack. And, uh, I guess, we'll, yeah, we may as well throw in Stink as well. So Grunt and Stink will both be in there. Let me, uh, let me split those two up. Kind of looks a little bit strange. I just chose Stink twice. Okay, there we go. That works. Uh, we'll give it... We'll give it 12 minutes. No, we'll give it 10. Because it's... Yeah, we, we don't want it to go on for too long. 
Uh, but this will be our first ever hardcore match. We'll, uh, we'll actually book this as a mayhem match again, just to... It's going to be mayhem. It's going to be a cluster, really, uh, for the hardcore title. And our first ever champion is indeed going to be Charlie Homicide. I mean, how could it, how could it not be, basically? Uh, who do I want to make the loser? I think Stink. Yeah, this is Stink, isn't it? Yeah. We'll make it Stink. Stink actually has decent popularity. I didn't really think about that. But there we go. There is the, uh, the hardcore title match. I like it. All right, so we need a cruiserweight high spots match. Let's go for Dark Eagle to sort of make his debut. I don't think he debuted for us personally, uh, but he can take on maybe Electrico. We we already used Electrico. Uh, let's go for somebody different. I'm trying to think of who else is in the uh, the actual division. Ramon Ramon Payas. There we go. So we'll give that 12 minutes. It's going to be high spots. Dark Eagle's going to get the win. Uh, both members are going to be involved in the, the Fatal 4-Way, so that'd be pretty cool. I think Ramon has bad psychology. Yeah. Kind of lacking a little bit. Dark Eagle's pretty good. Very, uh, very talented Japanese worker. So there we go. Scripted, decisive, high spots. And we're good to go. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Uh, we'll bump that back because the high spots match kind of needs to be fairly early in the show. All right, up next, let's go. Let's just go another singles match. And for this one, let's go. Do we want to use Sam Strong? How has Sam Strong lost popularity? What? He lost popularity. I didn't even know that was a that was possible. How do you lose popularity winning a match and having a 95 rated angle? I've never seen that before in my life. But there we go. Uh, instead of going Sam Strong, we'll go Richie Pangrezio Jr. We'll give him a match. Uh, seeing as he's a face, we might actually have the debut of Eric Tyler. Let's do it. Richie versus Eric Tyler. 10 minutes. Richie will get the win. And I think that's that should be fine. That should be an okay match. And actually, before that match, we might even do an angle for, for Coach Dick and Ricky. Sorry, Richie, not Ricky. So we'll do a double entertainment. Uh, we'll go eight minutes with them as well. We can have a decent amount of time. Um, no storyline. We don't actually need to advance storylines. I kind of just do that. It's like a force of habit thing. Okay, anything else? Uh, I think we want to go... Let's go another tag team match. No, actually, we'll go another, we'll go another singles match. I want to give, I want to give Sam Strong a match. So, Sam Strong... Exclude already booked. Make things a little bit easier. Sam Strong can take on... And he can probably take on Peter Valentine, actually. But I guess let's uh, let's change it up a little bit. Uh, Joel Bryant. That'd be a really good match, actually. There we go. Uh, just 10 minutes. Nice and easy. I mean, Joel's kind of like a bit of a lower mid-carder at this stage in his career. So, should be fine. Should be able to call, though, considering it is Joel Bryant. Even though he's, uh, oh, he's very close. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll script this one, I think, just for the sake of it. Uh, but he's only about two or three points away from calling 10-minute matches anyway. Uh, so Sam Strong will win that one. Uh, but during the match, we're going to have interference on Sam by both Cobra and by Viper. So really kicking the, the storyline off there. And then I think we'll have a singles match with Sam Sean taking on one of them on the uh, on the next show, next episode. But there we go. That's a, it's a good way to kick us off. Uh, let me actually have Sam Strong, I guess, open the show. Maybe cutting a promo onto Viper and Cobra. 
uh, they can be off screen. I guess he can just kind of say that he's not impressed, brother. And he, he expects more out of, you know, these Black Serpent cult guys. I don't know. Just kind of a weird sort of Hulk Hogan-ish type angle. Yeah, should be pretty good. I mean, we're only two minutes away from the uh, the allotted time that we actually need. Uh, I wonder if... I wonder what, what else we could do, actually. I mean, in theory, I, I did say that we could give Liberty an angle, so I guess we'll just give Liberty an angle, to be honest. There we go. Nice and easy. Uh, we'll try eight minutes. We'll try eight. Okay, we don't get penalized for it. All right, now we just need to go back and uh, and sort out all the uh, the match types and stuff like that. Which is going to be real fun. Uh, so this one, I don't think I... I made it the mayhem. Made this one high spots. So all we need is a storytelling match, which can easily be this one here. Very easy. There we go. All right, there's our storytelling match, and that should be all three. And we are indeed good to go. So let's run our second show here. Final show of the episode. Again, guys, make sure you smash the like button. Really show your support for the series. And of course, it does help the videos find more people. So it's a win-win for everybody. All right, here we go. We start off with a 99 from Sam Strong, brother. And uh, yeah, he cuts his promo onto the Black Serpent cult. Really kind of putting putting them over as, I guess, the, the big heels in this scenario. Basically saying that they're you know, they have no respect. Last week was uh, was obviously a, a fun time for him personally, being able to beat them. Um, yeah, came out, of, came out of the segment looking excellent. Obviously doing a masterful job improvising interactions. So obviously a lot better than last week, shall we say. And uh, yeah, got the crowd hotter. Show off to a strong start. What we like to see. All right, here's uh, his match, opening match of the show as well. We get an 85. Rated match. Probably a little bit too good. Probably going to beat the main event. Oh, actually, Liberty and Ripcord could probably beat an 85, maybe. But there we go. Sam Strong defeating Joel Bryant in 10.05 by pinfall with a strong arm tactic. During the match, we also saw Cobra run in and attack Strong. And also Viper attack Sam Strong as well. So yeah, both members of the Black Serpent cult. Clearly... Not liking Sam Strong's, you know, stern words to open the show. And yeah, somehow we get an 85 rated match out of Joel Bryant. Very happy. All right, we then go into an angle with Richie Pangrazio Jr. and his father, Coach Dick, Dick Prang Pangrazio. Holy hell, that's a mouthful. Uh, we get a 75 though. So that's actually, that's more improved, I think, than the last one with the Vessies. Um, but yeah, basically just the coach, similar to, I guess, Arn Anderson and Cody at the moment, um, albeit they're not father and son, but yeah, coach just hyping Richie up before his match. His match actually does really well. Get a 74 rated match here. We have Richie Pangrazio Jr. defeating Eric Tyler in 1019 by pinfall with a grand slam. Really good stuff. Uh, Eric debuting his traditionalist gimmick. Getting an initial rating of very good. That's a very solid angle. Sorry, very solid gimmick there. Um, and I guess we can uh, we can expect many solid angles from Mr. Tyler going forward as well. Uh, but yeah, both of them getting a 63 in-ring. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Same rating, uh, but Eric only had about 30 popularity or something like that. To, uh, to Richie's like 50, mid 50s. Anyway. Um, Eric Tyler benefited from being in amazing form as well. Whatever that means. I guess he's doing well. I guess he's in, yeah, he's in the prime of his career. So kind of makes sense, I guess. All right, we then go into a 45 rated angle um, with Whistler being attacked. By Romeo Heartthrob and Jimmy Power. Of course, Jimmy, a little bit upset from last week. Um, so yeah, they're beating him down, attacking him backstage. You know, beating him with his uh, American flag stick there as well. And then we have the save from Cowboy Ricky Dale. Cowboy shit starting there. 
And yeah, he improvised well throughout the segment because he was right on entertainment, kind of just telling them to uh, to get lost and get off Whistler. 45's not bad. It's not terrible. It's a it's a fighting angle. Fighting angles never do well. All right, we then go into a worse match. <laughs> we get a 37 here where we have the uh, the six-way false count anywhere match. And of course, we have the... Uh, our first ever hardcore champion as well. And we have Charlie Homicide defeating Danny Rushmore, Jack Bruce, Brunt, the Danger Kid, and Stink in 1024. And Charlie Homicide in Stink. And we have Charlie Homicide winning the HGC hardcore title. There we go. First ever hardcore champion, Charlie Homicide. I like it. Only a 37 though. Pretty bad. Uh, looking at everything else, though, obviously Chaos helping Grunt and Stink, um, both Charlie and Danger being Flavor of the Month, so that's pretty good. We might even have a death match between those two. That'd be pretty cool. All right, we then go straight into our Cruiserweight contest of the evening, our big high spots match. Get a 53 for this one. Not, not great, but it's also not terrible. It's pretty good. It's it, It's acceptable. Because I would say at the moment, our cruiserweights, for the most part, they're all kind of lower mid-carders or openers. So, it's decent. Anyway, we have Dark Eagle defeating Ramon Paez in 1150 by pinfall with an Eagle shock. And uh, yeah, Dark Eagle and Ramon have great chemistry and it's shown their performance. So that's great. And then we also had Ramon Paez getting better at his gimmick. What more can we say? That's, a, that's just a good match. I'm happy with that. All right, we go straight into the tag team match that was set up before with that backstage attack. We get a 58 for this one, so obviously a lot better than the angle. And we have Jimmy Power and Romeo Heartthrob pulling off a bit of an upset, defeating Ricky Dale, Cowboy Ricky Dale, and Whistler in 11.56 when Romeo Heartthrob submitted Cowboy Ricky Dale with a Cupid's clutch after blatantly cheating. So Romeo cheating to get the win. Obviously, he kind of wants his uh his opportunity at a at an international title match, and um, he might be well on his way to to getting just that. Uh, but yeah, good in ring performances all round. Obviously, Cowboy Ricky Dale lacking behind just just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, but he's also getting better at his gimmick, so that's a positive. We move on to a uh, it's a fifty seven. From Liberty. I thought it might have been a little bit better, if I'm being honest. I thought he might have scraped a, a 70 or above. Um, he didn't do well without a script to follow, so make of that what you will, but he also has a hot catchphrase, but I think we'll, we'll keep on leaving him without a script, because I think he has pretty good entertainment skills that he can pull it off. This might just be like a one-off, similar to Sam Strong, potentially. Anyway, he's in the main event up next. And we do actually get the best match on the card. We pull off an 86, and I'm very happy with that. That's, that is a solid rating. 86 rated main event. We have Ripcord defeating Liberty in 15.54 by pinfall with a Ripcord DDT. During the match, we also had Dusty Streets come down to ringside and cause a, cause a bit of a distraction there for Ripcord. He didn't really, really know what to make of it. Uh, but as you can see, both Ripcord and Liberty have great chemistry. So that's big. And I say that's big because obviously I said we're going to build Liberty up to try and be a main event star for the company. And Ripcord is eventually going to have to pass the torch to somebody like Liberty. And the fact they have great chemistry and can put on a, a really good match. That's, just, that's excellent. It really is. There's nothing else to really say. Uh, both at the announcing desk and the, you know, Kyle Rhodes was weak and the match deserved better color commentary. But apart from that, what a match. Our best ever match on the series so far, beating out the uh, the 85 earlier in the show. And then finally, we have a, a bit of a eye-to-eye -eye confrontation, a bit of a stare down and uh, a few choice words being said between Ripcord and Dusty Streets. And yeah, we finish off with an 82 rated angle to close TV. Pretty happy with that. And obviously, with this angle, it's kind of 
alluding to the fact that these these are the two top guys, apart from Sam Strong. But these are the two top guys that are, are likely, the announcers put over the fact that they're likely going to be contending against each other for the world title. That's how we end the show. Would you look at that? We get an 86 rated overall show rating for our second TV show. You love to see it. You really do. I'm, I'm I've got a big smile on my face. This has been a very, very successful first episode. I've really enjoyed it. Anyway, we get an 86 there. 17 regions again. Uh, one in Canada that's being restricted by growth. Uh, but what I want to do here before we uh, before I end the episode is I want to check the size. So we get a 1.21 TV rating there. 907,000 viewers. So it's gone up. It's gone up quite a bit, actually. About 25,000, I think. Not bad. Getting close and closer and closer to a million, I guess. Supreme TV. We actually beat Supreme TV this week. Can you believe that? They beat us in the, the main event rating, which is pretty much a given. You would kind of expect it. Uh, but yeah, better show. Got a better show. They got a better TV rating, more viewers, but we put on the better show, so I'm happy with that. All right, let's check size. All right, so we're up to 56 already. That really didn't take too long. We've already gained one point. We started on 55. We're up to 56. We only need to get up to, to 59 popularity in the uh, in the southwest. Because obviously we've already got the 35 in both mid-south and northwest. So there we go. Three more points of popularity and we go up to medium size already. Which is pretty crazy. But then again, a company of HGC size, you would kind of maybe expect that. Another thing to mention is we are losing a lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, as you can see, $200,000 on media, which is the, the money we have to pay the broadcasters, which is just insane. Obviously, production values, a little bit on merchandise, a little bit on marketing, show costs very cheap, and then our worker costs are absolutely ridiculous and insane. But as you can see, we want to get merchandise upgraded as soon as possible. Because we can really capitalize and make a lot of good, good money from that. So yeah, that's where we're kind of left. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure you smash a like on the video if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel as well. If you do subscribe, make sure you turn on the notification bell. And you'll be notified when these episodes come out in the future. Apart from that, guys, I'll see you in episode two. Thanks for watching. As always, take it easy and goodbye.